morning from my bed. <laughs> um, I'm still in my pyjamas right now because although it's a Monday, I'm taking the day off because it's been kind of like go, go, go for quite some time. Um, and I just need a day um, for myself. So today I'm taking the day off, but it's also the first day of the Finish-a-thon, which is the read-a-thon that's all about finishing books that you've already started. So perfect timing. I'm going to spend the day doing a few bits and pieces around the house, but also mainly reading and chilling out. And these are the two books that I would really like to finish today. So I feel like where I am in both of these books, I could finish both of them today. Now, this wasn't on my original TBR, but that's because I started it um, in the past week and just haven't had a chance to finish it before the readathon started. So that's also another reason why it's top priority to finish because um, I'm, I'm literally in the process of reading it right now. I'm currently on page 193 and I believe it comes in at around 300, 301 pages. So like I said, um, two thirds of the way through this one, feel like because I'm just having a chill like day, I should be able to easily read that. So that should be great. And then the first book from my actual TBR video that I want to get to is this one. Um, I think it's probably the one I started the longest ago as well. And I've meant to go back and finish for quite some time. Plus, I think it should be one of the quickest to finish because I am halfway, f halfway through, sorry, the bookmark is uh, <laughs> uh, this postcard which I enjoy. Um, so I'm about halfway through this one but it's also written in verse so it's very very quick to read and I could just sit down for like a couple of hours solid and zoom through it so that's kind of my plan today is to finish both of these and that will hopefully be like a good start to the video. But I also have a new desk being delivered today so that's the other thing that I would like to do which is set that up so that come Wednesday when I'm starting back at work I have a nice new desk to work at um, and can and can be super productive but until then I have today and tomorrow off and tomorrow I am actually going to meet a friend socially distant so that should be really really nice um, but yeah I thought I'd just update you before I sort of like lie down and chill for a bit and, and, and do some reading and then I will check in with you later today. So hi my name is Jean and I am broken. I finished <laughs> Moonrise by Sarah Crossan and just had a little weep. <laughs> Didn't show that on the camera. Um, but I'm, I'm broken. I'm broken hearted. And I knew that's how this book was going to make me feel. And not in a negative sense in that, um, you know, it frustrated me or like um, something along those lines. You know, it's meant to be a sad book. It deals with grief and sadness and family and loss and relationships, connections, an unjust justice system, incarceration, death row, and it's incredible. It's such, such, <laughs> this is actually the second book I've read by Sarah Cross and I've also read one and that also made me cry. So there's also something about her writing that um, is just very effective in conveying like intense, sad emotions. <laughs> um, I also think the verse, actually helps that the fact that it's written in verse I think that writing style really um brings that across and helps you feel really like absorbed in the story you just sort of like rattle through it because it's so smooth to read in that verse I find you read it very quickly and keep turning the pages and oh, just like I don't I don't know how to express <laughs> exactly how this book made me feel but I thought it was so good. It is such a good book. It is, like I said, about an unjust justice system, which is the justice system in uh, the modern world. <laughs> it's not fictional. Um, it's about a boy whose brother is on death row and it's all about that. And it's not really about... Uh, it's, I don't know, it, it, it's about a lot of things and it's not about other things. Um, but more so it's about the the boy than the brother rather than you following what it's like to be on death row is following the perspective of a family member um and and just sort of talking about the system and honestly um just oh my god there's so much wrong with the incarceration system in general like in, there's a lot of problems just simply with the the system of incarceration 
But on top of that, when there is capital punishment, I can't wrap my head around it. Like, I don't understand how you can have a justice system based in capital punishment. Like, that is not a good system. <laughs> I obviously don't have a lot of articulate words right now, but I thought this book was really, really good, really, really well done, really conveyed a lot of emotion and um, opened up some really interesting talking points. And it is YA, so I think it does that for a really wide audience. It helps introduce different topics to readers and I really respect that and then there's this little section at the back where the author talked a little bit more about when she first sort of started learning more about um, the justice system and death row and capital punishment and sources that she would recommend that readers check out. Oh sorry that was acknowledgements, it was the author's note I meant to show you. Um, so she mentions for example some books I'll tell you, um, she mentions Injustice, Life and Death in the Courtrooms of America um, she also mentions Just Mercy, A Story of Justice and Redemption by Brian Stevenson. Um, and she also uh, mentions a film called 14 Days in May and an organisation called Equal Justice Initiative, EJI.org. So if you're interested in looking more into those issues, I think it's really important to also obviously talk about the reality of these issues and look more into them after reading a book like this. And yeah. I'm crushed, I'm broken, I'm so glad I read it, I think it's such a great book, I think it deals with all of these themes excellently and that's kind of all I have to say, I feel like I'm not being very articulate but like I said, I've just been crying so it's really hard to then like come on and film an articulate book review but hopefully I have conveyed to you um, my appreciation of the book. So yeah, I'm going to take a little break from reading. Um, I'm hoping that my desk arrives soon so I can put that up and then I'm going to carry on reading Mexican Gothic so I'll check back in with you then. Right, let's see. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, <laughs> so it is the next day and I am off out to meet my friend Jill like I mentioned yesterday um, but I thought I would actually do a little outfit of the day since I know some of you enjoy a little bit of like thrifty fashion content so I'm here, let's do it. I am realising now that I say that though that my outfit of the day is literally just a dress. Which I'm not sure if that counts as like anything styling wise. Um, but I'm also really happy with this find because I got it in the charity shop for $6.99. It's originally from Zara. And if you don't know, I um, had sort of stopped buying fast fashion uh, over a year ago. Um, I, like no criticism of like it's a complicated uh, sort of relationship I think that uh, people have with fast fashion and for many fast fashion is the only accessible option out there so like no judgment but if you can buy less fast fashion and shop from sustainable brands or buy second hand or mend the clothes that you already have then that is incredible and you're doing a wonderful thing for the environment um so i would encourage you to do that um and this was my most recent find it's not that nice today it's not raining anymore though so that's good um but i thought it was like appropriate for something a bit warmer um, and then i'll chuck a denim jacket on top um plus a pair of hoops because hoops are my favorite thing in the entire world i love hoop earrings <laughs> um on the reading side of things sorry on well, my phone i can never remember where i'm supposed to like um on the <laughs> reading side of things i kept reading mexican gothic yesterday but i've still got about 50 pages to go in that one i think i actually find it quite difficult to like adjust my brain to focus on a new story or get back into another story after I've just finished our book you know you're sort of recovering or processing what you've just read so after I read Moonrise um, I wasn't really that much in the mood for a lot of a lot of reading <laughs> I watched a little bit of Dead to Me on Netflix instead and did read about 50 pages of uh, Mexican Gothic but didn't like push myself to finish it because I wanted to enjoy it as we have really very much got to the big sort of twist in the plot I think around like the two-thirds mark was sort of when um, revelations are made and it gets all twisty and some of the creepy things are explained but to be honest they're just creepier now that they've been explained and I'm really enjoying it I think it's a really good book but I also can't say anything because it's like major spoilers and I want to talk about it with people. So if you have read Mexican Gothic, please leave a comment down below, maybe like mention that there's spoilers so other people don't read it, but like I need to talk about this book with people who have read it because like <laughs> I also want to compare it to another horror book I've read, but if I make that comparison, it also 
is a spoiler, so mm, annoying. Um, but really enjoying it and we'll finish it today. I do also have Raven Flight, which was one of the books on my TBR by Juliette Marillier, um, on my uh, phone, like as an audiobook words so I'll probably listen to that because I'm I'm going to be walking for a little while to go and meet my friend um so I'll I'll try and like crack on with that story as well because I'd really really like to finish that one during this uh readathon I feel like I have a few in my mind that are like top priority and that's one of them so I'm going to listen to that and read Mexican Gothic and hopefully at least finish Mexican Gothic today which I think just about covers it so I'm gonna head out now up in here now. So I've been listening to the audiobook of Ravenflight, like I said I would, <laughs> but I think after I'm home I'm going to stick with the physical book rather than the audiobook because in the book, in the book it draws on lots of uh, Scottish folklore which I love and I actually quite like the way that Juliet Marillier writes Scottish dialect but in the audiobook only the fairies have Scottish accents and the narrator is not doing a good job. <laughs> I, to be fair, hate audiobooks narrated by non-Scottish narrators who then have a few characters that are Scottish because I've never heard it once done well, like, <laughs> and it throws me out of the story. A few words can be fine and then there'll be one word that they'll just say really, really oddly that it'll just take me out of the story, so this isn't the worst one I've heard, to be fair, but I liked my version where I was reading the book and everyone had a Scottish accent and they all sounded right, so... <laughs> I'm going to return to the physical book when I get back, but I am getting back into it, which is really nice. So that's kind of where we're at now. So I've just sat down to um, get to work, um, but I thought I would quickly give you a sort of morning update on my reading before I crack on and check in with you at some point later, because what happened last night was, I remember there was a book on my TBR that I'd completely forgotten about. <laughs> like, I know I filmed a TBR video, um, but somehow, some way, I completely forgot that in that video, I mentioned this, which is Girls of Storm and Shadow, which I was already halfway through, and it's the sequel to, oh, I have it down here, Girls of Paper and Fire, <laughs> and I love this book so much, um, and then couldn't finish this because I left it in London when I first came um, up to Edinburgh, and I'd forgotten it was on my TBR, I'd forgotten I was halfway through it, and this, this is also one of the reasons that I think, like, I don't end up finishing books if I put them down for a few weeks because I forget about them and happily I remembered last night so I carried on with the reading and um, read about 30 pages of this so this I think I'm now going to focus on because I'm further into this than I am into Ravenflight which was the book I was talking about yesterday so I'd like to concentrate on finishing this because like I'm more into the story than I am with Ravenflight um, and I'm further into it and closer to the end basically. So this I would like to be today's project in between actual working. So like at lunchtime and in the evening, I'll hopefully power through this and um, be able to share my thoughts with you. But I just thought it was really funny that I completely forgot all about this book. But I remember now and that's all that matters. So I'm looking forward to finding out what happens to two of my favorite female love interests ever. <laughs> so it's lunchtime, which also means 
it's reading time, I'm going to get back to my book. Um, but I just thought I would like publicly shame myself on the internet because this is my favourite lunch. I have this about five out of seven days a week. I'd have it every day as well and be quite content with that. And it's a bagel, <laughs> peanut butter, olives and cucumber. And I will stand by this combination. Everyone I tell about this combination just I, I, like has a look of utter horror on their face. But have any of them tried it? No. And my attitude to food is if I like it separately, I'm going to like it together. So here you go. This is the best lunch ever. Usually I prefer black olives, but green was what I had. And if you would like to try this at home, please tag me on Twitter or Instagram. So that's lunch done. But before I get back to actually reading about women and the legal systems of the Athenian democracy, I had to talk about my new work set up because I am... Um, Loving it. <laughs> so I mentioned before that I had a desk being delivered, which it obviously has, and I'm currently standing at it because it's one of those desks that goes up and down. <laughs> it can be both a sitting and a standing desk, and oh my goodness, is it so cool. So I was actually sent this desk for free to review. I am not being sponsored or paid to talk about it, but at the same time, I do recognise that being sent a desk for review is quite a substantial item to be sent. And when I did get the email from FlexiSpot, who are the company that produced these desks, I couldn't really believe my eyes because I had been planning on buying a desk anyway. As a lot of you know, I have just moved back up to Edinburgh from London for the time being and will be living with my mum for a few months. But I didn't have a desk in her house and you know, I'm doing my PhD, I also work from home. So having a desk is quite like, important, right? And I am lucky enough that my mum lets me use the spare bedroom as a sort of like office slash library space, which is, like I said, incredible, but didn't have a desk. So I was planning on buying a desk anyway. And then I get this like magical email from FlexiSpot asking if I'd like to try out one of their desks. And of course I did. And like I said, I'm really, really enjoying it. <laughs> I'm currently standing at it because I've been sitting for a little while now. And it's all done using this little like keypad on the side. So if I want to lower it, I simply press the down key. It's like magic. I know it's technology, which isn't magic, but it feels like magic. And then if like I want to work standing up for a little while now, I can just raise it back up like this and it's just fantastic and it fits perfectly into the space. I have the smaller desktop size so it is a frame which comes separately and you put together the frame and then as I think you saw you then screw on top the desktop separately and there's two different desktop sizes for the frame that I have and the like magical electrical workings are inside the frame. I obviously have no idea how technology works, but <laughs> I am just kind of thrilled. I have been working at this all morning and it's been so lovely. I mean, simply just having a desk is such a treat. Um, and it's really making me feel quite like professional. I mean, I am professional, but I don't always feel very professional. And now I've got my little study set up. I um, nabbed this angle poise light that my mum wasn't using, have some notepads and a spare keyboard and mouse to use with my laptop. So it's all really just lovely and coming together. And I'm sort of just like making the most of um, staying at my mum's and having this nice little space to work in both with my PhD and my like work work I guess you could call it so this has been lovely and this kind of finished everything off this desk it's really just sort of like brought everything together and really is making me feel good about that space and about going to work in the mornings now so yeah I'm like feeling very productive and very good so I'm just really really grateful that FlexiSpot sent me my lovely desk and I just wanted to say thank you and tell you about them in this video so it will be linked down below of course and I'm now gonna go back to work so thanks for listening well <laughs> I just finished this book it took me a little while to finish it I think because I was so anxious like in a good way because it's horror and I felt so invested and I couldn't bring myself to like read that last little bit but I've done it <laughs> and I ended up giving this book five stars Seriously, um, this readathon's so funny for me because so far the two books I finished, which were Moonrise and this, I've given five stars on Goodreads. So they've both been incredible, which just goes to show that some of the books <laughs> you maybe put off finishing or take a little bit longer to read 
often the best books but at the same time I just like I'm this kind of person and let me know if you're this kind of person as well who is really bad at finishing things most tv shows even the ones I absolutely love I like, don't watch the last episode of <laughs> and maybe I will but it'll take me like a year after I finish the rest of it so like for example I don't know something like elementary I guess first six seasons I or fish first five seasons is there five or seven seasons that whatever um I like binge watched in a row and then spent ages before I watched last season and then left the last episode for ages and then there's other tv shows where I've literally just never watched the last episode like I never watched the last episode of Good Omens um, <laughs> um I just often like I remember with Sabrina I left it like months before I watched the last episode um, I don't know why I'm that kind of person, but that's the kind of person I am. So it's really good to be pushed to finish some books because often it also is similar with books. It's not exactly the same, but um, in a way I will read the first sort of half or two thirds of a book a lot quicker than I'll read the last bit because I just draw it out a little bit. And sometimes that's because they're good, sometimes that's because they're bad. It's not like a, a consistent reason. I, like I just said though, I finished Mexican Gothic, which is book two. I made a little bit of progress in Ravenflight and Girls of Storm and Shadow, but I freaking love this and I kind of wish I read it as a buddy read because it was the kind of book that I was constantly speculating about throughout the reading process and it would have been really fun to speculate with someone else. It's also the kind of book that I need to talk about with other people. So if you've read it, please, please let me know because I need to talk about it. It's like a book that you need to share with other people and discuss um, and it was just brilliant I loved it um if I didn't mention before it's set in 1950s Mexico about a woman who goes to visit her cousin who's recently married and may potentially be ill or in danger in this sort of like gothic manor house I am also about to enjoy the greatest delicacy that Scotland has to offer which is the macaroni pie Oh my goodness, it smells so good. I love I love macaroni pies so much. This is like such like a quintessential like Scottish fast food. And um, I ha literally haven't had one since I got here this year. And that's usually like my sort of thing I make an effort to have whenever I'm visiting Edinburgh. So I'll probably only get them like four times a year in the past. But when the, like the four times I visit Edinburgh, I'll always make sure to get one. And I haven't done it in all this time, but today. <laughs> I picked up a two pack from the fridge section in Morrison's. So I've still got another one and always lives up to the hype. <laughs> um, yep, that's kind of my update for you. Gonna nibble on my macaroni pie and probably actually watch some YouTube before I get cracking on another book. <laughs> I'm sorry but I just like clicked on the camera to just like get like a little bit of B footage of me reading and the most dramatic thing just happened and now I'm really concerned for one of the characters so I'm gonna go find out what's gonna happen Butterfly, butterfly! Oh, look like a real one Butterfly, it is real Where did this vlog go? Let me see it YouTube Oh my god <laughs> Hello. Do you want to tell me about something you've read? Okay. Um, I just finished reading The Bees, which was amazing. It's like, I would, say, I would say it's like half of Annihilation versus half of A Handmaid's Tale. Ooh. Have you read Annihilation? No, but I've heard of it and it, it sounds good. It's from the Southern Reach trilogy and it's incredible. Read the books before you watch the film. Okay. So completely ruin the books. but. Amazing also. Would, I also don't think recommend. I said, this is Misha, Hello. who's like one of my oldest friends in the entire world. I'm not a book person. That's not true. I like to read, but I don't Instagram book. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's, that's the case for most readers. Yes, I'm a normal reader. <laughs> 
So if you've ever found yourself thinking whilst watching any of my social media that the only thing I do with my free time is build bookcases, then to be honest, you wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> because I'm here today to build an iron little bookcase, but this is such a teeny, teeny, tiny one. It's like, honestly, it's like this size. It's so cute. It's two little shelves. And it's actually also going to function as my sort of side table. So there's a chair in my room that I like to read in. Um, and I didn't have a side table for it and this was reduced on Wayfair to about £15, this little bookcase and I thought well if I'm gonna have a side table it should be one I can put books in. So here we are. Allow me to introduce you to the new member of my bookish household. <laughs> See I told you it was tiny. It's just this tiny little one, which like I said, I'm also going to start using as a little side table next to my reading chair. And it means I can put like the books I'm currently reading in it like that. I mean, magic. Y'all know how a bookshelf works, but these little things kind of complete your space, right? So I'm actually really excited to now put sort of all the books I'm actually currently reading and haven't finished or in the middle of on this wee bookcase. I think I'll only use the top shelf for books and then I might put vinyl singles on the bottom shelf because... Um, I have a box I keep my like full size record albums in but the singles could maybe do with going on like a little shelf like this so that might be what I use that for but regardless I'm, I'm probably only going to use one for books like I mentioned for what I'm currently reading which I think is quite apt given that this is the finish thon and we're trying to finish things so it will really mean that I am constantly confronted by books I started but haven't finished yet. On that topic I have read more of this. I read a bit more and then I listened to a bit more. After all my complaining about the audiobook, I have been listening to it, mainly because I always like to have an audiobook on the go. Um, I had to go to the post office this morning and when I was walking, I was listening and this was what I had. So I've carried on and I don't want what I said earlier to come across as a criticism necessarily of the audiobook. It is a criticism of the narrator's Scottish accent, which like I said, is not very good. But the portion that I've been listening to didn't have as much fae in it so it's been predominantly the main characters who are all human and therefore she's narrating in her own accent which is an English accent and is doing a very good job of narrating like she's a good narrator and voice actor I just don't like the Scottish accent and I also feel like that's something that a non-Scot <laughs> or someone that doesn't live in Scotland wouldn't notice as much because it's not the worst Scottish imitation accent I've ever heard but if you're familiar with the Scottish accent there are just words that sound so wrong and I can't get over that but I've been listening to the audiobook and in the book that brings me to about a page 150 and there's about 400 pages so I still have like 250 pages left in this book it's not a quick one for me to read and I think I've said it before this is not my favorite Juliet Marillier series she is hands down the best fantasy author of all time in my opinion I love her mix <laughs> but this is not her best series. It's a YA series and her other books are adult and I, I feel like her writing lends itself more to that because these are trying to be a bit, a bit more fast paced and adventure like and I follow the same like action packed story over a few books rather than being quieter and more like detailed and slower which I like about her other books. But given that she's the best fantasy writer of all time like I just mentioned, even the not my favorite series by her is still good and I feel like I'm finally getting into it like when I first picked this up I didn't thoroughly get into it and that's why I didn't pursue finishing it but I feel like I'm now at a point at that about 150 page point where I am really now back invested in the storyline and I'm really excited to keep reading so I actually think this might be the one I focus on for now because I suddenly feel like I'm in that way that I can't put it down and that's really nice to get to that point and sometimes it does just take a little while. It's so interesting because some books I feel like from the first page you're in love with, other books you love from the first page and then about halfway through don't like anymore and then others are slow to start but then you fall in love with. Every book is different but now I feel like I'm into it and we also got to bump into one of my favourite sort of side characters from book one so that was lovely. Um, and I don't think I have said before but this is a sequel to a book called Shadowfell and Shadowfell is set in a sort of ancient imitation of Scotland um, where there are loads and loads of different types of fair folk but they live in hiding because the king of this country is against magic and persecutes any magic users and we follow um, a young woman who joins the rebellion to um, overthrow this king so it's a pretty good concept and I am enjoying it but I would still say like Seven Waters or Blackthorn and Grimm are my favourite series. Um, but I'm gonna go now put this in its little space and pop my wee finisher on TBR on it.
Well, that's book three of the Finishathon finished, and this, my friends, was a roller coaster. I'm not even sure if I can quite put my thoughts into words at the moment. I've literally just uh, closed the last page. I think in a similar way to book one, things like really continuously escalate, like in quite like a line like this, right up until the end, and it goes, ha 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 ha, and then it ends. You're like, where is book three? Um, I do have mixed feelings though. I don't think I loved this one quite as much as book one, which I think is true of a lot of second books in trilogies or like four book series. A second book is hard because expectations are very much set by book one. And in a way, this book's quite different from book one because book one is quite a closed environment. We're, we're at this palace with our main character, Leigh, and experiencing her being forced to be the concubine of the king and the violence of that and her falling in love um, with another girl there called Ren. And I love that. I love Ren and, and Leigh's relationship development. And... It was really interesting because book two is more of like an adventure narrative um, where we're like traveling throughout the world and having a lot of set up and um, politics sort of woven in in order to sort of, you know, set things up for book three. And I imagine the conclusion and sort of give you more of that element. But it also meant there was less time just spent sitting with the characters, which is something I really enjoyed about book one. And I kind of missed that. So... It, it was like a mixture of things. I think the second half was um, better than the first half. I think that's one of the reasons I didn't finish it that quickly because um, it was a slow start. But that sort of last 200 pages, I wasn't able to put down, particularly the last like 150. I've just zoomed through those in the past like day and a half because I had to know what was going to happen. And I felt a lot of like I said, roller coastery emotions. This is what roller coasters do, don't they? <laughs> Including like anger and sadness and pain and fear, um, irritation, but also like respect. And I just like feel a real mixed bag of things right now. So I'm glad I, I finally finished this and I'm really, really excited for book three, even if I didn't love this one quite as much as book one. So I forgot to mention, but last night I also finished issue three of Ghost in, in LA, which is a comic book series. And I was scrolling through script as I often do and was reminded that I'd only read the first issue of this comic book a few weeks, if not like a month ago, and meant to carry on. But because they're listed on script as individual issues rather than volumes, I hadn't like immediately just kept reading through the first volume which is made up of the first four issues so I've now read uh, issue three like I mentioned and I think this afternoon I'm going to carry on and read issue four which will bring me to the end of the first volume and I will have finished this comic book that I started and forgot to carry on with despite really enjoying. This is such a fun comic book it is about a young girl who goes off to college to follow her boyfriend who's already started um, attending the same college, I guess. And um, when she gets there, he dumps her and her roommate sucks and she feels all alone. So she ends up moving in with a group of ghosts who live in this <laughs> seemingly abandoned old uh, like stately home in LA. And I really like this comic book because actually a ton has happened just in the first three issues, uh, which makes me think that a lot will have happened by the end of volume one. And oftentimes I find the first volumes of comic books don't live up to my expectations and it's the later volumes that I really get into the story during whereas this one felt like it really packed a punch even in those first three issues and I still have a whole one more to go which I feel like is going to deliver even more so I'm excited to read that.